we've defined prime numbers and now we define co-prime numbers. Let's say if we have two numbers, integers, and if their greatest common divisor is 1, then we say they are co-prime. Co-prime. Or we could say they are relatively prime. Or uh, we might say prime to each other. For example, uh, if you apply the Euclidean algorithm, you, you can show that the greatest common divisor of 60 and 77 is 1. So these two numbers are co-prime, or prime to each other, or relatively prime. And also, uh, we've seen, uh, according to the theorem we have shown before, you, could, you may show the following uh, fact. So if a and uh, a and b are co-prime, if and only if uh, there exist some integers such that uh, uh, a x plus b y is equal to one. So try to show this using the theorem we have proved before. Now let us prove a very basic theorem about prime numbers. Uh, that is, uh, this theorem is uh, proved in Euclid's The Elements. Okay, and let a, b be integers and p b prime. Okay, so a b are just any integers and p is a prime number. And then if p divides a times b then either p divides a or p divides Okay, let's prove this theorem. So, for example, if this holds, then we are done. So suppose this doesn't hold. P doesn't div suppose P does not divide B. Okay, then this means then P and B don't share any common divisor, so they are co-prime. Therefore, there exists some integers, say x and y, such that uh, p x p x plus b y is equal to one. Then let's uh, multiply both sides by a. Then we have a p x plus a b y equals to a. Now, clearly, p divides this term. P divides uh, a p x because p is a factor in here, in this term. And by assumption, p divides uh, p divides a b. So by assumption, p divides a b. Therefore, p divides uh, the left hand side. So p divides this, p divides this. So the left hand side can be is divisible by p. Therefore, the right-hand side is also divisible by p. 
the left hand side is divisible by P. Therefore, the right hand side is also divisible by P. That means P divides A. And we are done. Here, an important point is that P is a prime. Okay? If that's not the case, then this doesn't hold. Okay? If P is not prime, if P divides A times B, then it can divide both. But that's not the case if P is a prime. Next, we prove the following theorem. That is, square root of 2 is not a rational number. Let's prove this one. We prove by contradiction. So assume, uh, suppose square root of 2 is a rational number then we can express this number as a ratio of integers and n is not equal to zero and also we may assume that m and n are co-prime because otherwise we can just cancel out uh, common divisors so we may assume M and a co prime. Okay, now let's uh, square both sides and move this n to the left hand side. Then we have 2n squared equals to m squared. And now the left hand side is divisible by 2, of course, because it has a factor 2. Uh, therefore, uh, 2 divides m squared, right? So the left hand side is divisible by 2, therefore the right hand side is also divisible by 2. So this means, by, by the previous theorem, this means uh, 2 divides m, because m squared is m times m. So this uh, holds. <coughs> now, so this means m is an even number. Therefore, uh, there exists some l, an integer, such that m is equal to 2l. Now, substitute this into this equation. Then we have 2n squared equals to 4l squared. By cancelling 2 from both sides, we have n squared equals to 2l squared. Now, the right hand side is divisible by 2, therefore the left hand side is divisible by 2. Therefore, uh, and by the sa same argument, 2 divides n. But this means n is an even number. Therefore, uh, uh, there exists some integer Okay, such that uh, n is equal to 2k. But uh, by assumption, we were assuming that n and m are co-prime. But uh, now n has a factor 2, and two, uh, m has a factor 2. So that is a contradiction. Uh, therefore, uh, the our initial assumption was wrong, so that is this. Therefore, uh, by contradiction, uh, square root of 2 does not belong to the set of rational numbers. And we are done. And here's another example. 
suppose a b are integers and p is a prime and assume that p divides a squared plus p b squared okay then clearly uh, we can see that p can divide a squared plus uh, p b squared by assumption and minus p b squared because p divides this by assumption by this assumption and clearly p divides p times b squared but this is so this is cancelled by this so therefore p divides a squared and by the application of the theorem we have p divides a and next i will just list a theorem or it's it's rather a corollary uh, of the previous theorem and suppose a and b are integers and Q, let Q be uh, Q and B are co prime. Okay, and Q is an integer, of course. So this means uh, the greatest common divisor of Q and B is 1. Okay, then if uh, Q divides AB, then Q divides A. So try to prove this one. Previously, we have seen that if uh, D is the greatest common divisor of A and B, then there exists there exist some X and Y such that ax plus by is equal to d. However, these x and y are not unique. So there may be some other integers that can satisfy this equation. So suppose x prime and y prime also satisfy this equation. Then by subtracting uh, this, uh, this one from this one, then we have uh, a uh, x minus x uh, maybe x prime and minus x and equals to negative b y prime minus y okay and since d is the greatest common divisor of A and B, so we can divide both sides by D. Then have uh, A prime X prime minus X, B prime Y prime minus Y, where uh, A prime is defined by this, dividing A by uh, D, and B is D times B prime. And of course, since D is the greatest common divisor, uh, A prime and B prime are co prime. Oh, it's kind of confusing. Uh, anyway, so greatest common divisor of A prime and B prime is 1. So they are relatively prime. Now, since A prime. Uh, uh, this left hand side is of course divisible by a prime that means uh, the right hand side is divisible by a prime however a prime is relatively prime to b prime so a prime cannot divide b prime so this one cannot be di divided by a, a prime so this means a prime divides y prime minus y Right, so this means uh, y prime minus y can be expressed as a multiple of a prime, so where t is an 
sum, any integer. Okay, so if we substitute this, uh, this one into uh, this equation, <coughs> oh, this equation, we have uh, a prime x prime minus x b prime minus b prime a prime times t. Now cancel a primes from left and right. We have x prime minus x equals negative b prime times t. So after all, y prime is y plus a prime t and x prime is x minus b prime so for any t integer, uh, x prime and y prime can satisfy uh, this equation or this equation. So there are actually infinitely many solutions to uh, that equation, uh, this equation. Next, we want to prove the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, but before that we, uh, we need uh, one lemma. Okay, let n be a composite number. Number. Okay, so this means n is a product of some prime numbers. Okay, then there exists uh, there exists at least one prime uh, let's call it P uh, such that uh, P divides N and P is less than or equal to the square root of N Okay, let's prove this. Since n is a composite number, uh, the existence is existence of a prime is uh, trivial. So it is just it's almost an assumption, right? So suppose p divides n. Okay, and if p squared divides n, then this means p, uh, p squared is less than or equal to n. And this is clear. Therefore, p is less than or equal to square root of n. So that's fine. So next, if p squared does not divide n, then what happens? Then there exists, there is another prime let's say Q such that P Q divides n. Okay, and Q can be either greater than or less than P, but uh, without losing generality, we may assume that P is less than Q. So if this is not the case, then we just swap the role of P and Q and do the same argument. So this is okay then p squared is less than pq which is less than or equal to n because pq divides n so this is true because of this assumption this is true therefore p is less than or equal to n squared and we are done now let's see the fundamental theorem of arithmetic 
that is every integer, every natural number, greater than 2 or equal to 2 is can be uh, represented as as represented as a product of uh, a finite number of primes finitely many primes and furthermore if uh, n is written as in two ways like uh, so p1 p2 and so on up to p r these are primes and q1 q2 and so on up to q s so q1 q2 up to q s they are primes so if there are two ways to write uh, this uh, this integer n then uh, this r and s they are equal so the same number of primes and if we sort these primes in an appropriate manner, for example, in ascending order or descending order or whatever, in some order, then we have pi equals to p, uh, qi for each i from 1 to up to r, which is equal to s. So this is the claim of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Before proving, it may be instructive to see a simple example. For example, consider the number 12. This can be decomposed into a product of primes, such as 2 times 2 times 3, or it can be represented as 3 times 2 times 2, or 2 times 3 times 2, and so on. So there are multiple ways to uh, express uh, this number. However, if we sort these numbers in ascending, uh, uh, yeah, ascending order, then this is uh, this one would be the unique representation of uh, this one, uh, this number twelve. Now let's prove the theorem. Uh, first, we prove uh, the first part. That is, it can be any integer can be represented as a product of finitely many primes. So this part. Uh, we prove by induction. Okay, For when n is equal to 2, the claim is trivial. Trivial. It's true. And suppose, uh, okay, consider uh, Suppose n is greater than 2. And, and also, and the result holds for all integers less than n. Okay, so this is the induction hypothesis. Then if n is prime, uh, then the result is trivial. Uh, if n is not prime, that is, if n is composite, composite, then uh, 
we can represent n as a product of two numbers and n1 and n2 are integers right and also uh, n1 is less than n and greater than 1 and n2 is also greater than 1 and less than n. Therefore, for this n1, uh, by the induction hypothesis, the claim holds. So n1 can be represented as a product of finitely many primes. And the same applies to n2. Therefore, uh, n is also a product of uh, finitely many primes. Therefore, uh, uh, okay, by induction hypothesis, and two are uh, products of finitely many primes. Therefore, so is n, because n is a product of n1 and n2. So uh, the existence of the uh, representation is done. Next, we prove the uniqueness of the representation. So assume uh, n is represented as p1, p2, up to p r, p r. And also q1, q2, and so on, and up to q s. Okay. Now, uh, consider this part and since the left hand side is divisible by p1 this means the right hand side is also divisible by p1 right but uh, all the factors on the right hand side are primes so one of q1 q2 and so on must be equal to p1 so one of q1, q2, qs must be equal to p1. By uh, arranging the labels, indices, we may assume, uh, uh, we may assume q1 is actually equal to p1. Then we have p2, p3, by, by dividing both sides by p1, we have uh, q, pr equals to q2, q3, up to qs. But now, this number is less than n, right? So by the induction hypothesis, we are still using this induction hypothesis, the claim is true for all numbers less than n. So at this point, the number of factors on the left hand side and the right hand side must be equal. So r is equal to s. And by therefore, by rearranging the order of these factors, we, we can conclude that pi is equal to qi for each i from 2, 3, up to r. And we are done. Now, as a result of this theorem, we may write any natural numbers or uh, natural numbers as uh, this. So we just uh, aggregate all the same primes into uh, into this type of uh, factors. So powers of primes 
p1 to the power of alpha 1, p2 to, to the power of alpha 2, and so on. Alpha 2 and pr to the power of alpha r. And each p1, p2, p up to pr, they are distinct. They're all different prime numbers. And alpha i are uh, positive uh, na uh, natural numbers. Next, we prove this little interesting theorem. That is, there are infinitely many primes. This is also proved in Euclid's elements. So let's prove this. Uh, we prove by contradiction. Uh, suppose there are finitely many primes. Finitely many primes. So we can just enumerate all primes, like uh, p1, p2, and pn, in ascending order. So that means uh, this one, p1 corresponds to 2, p2 corresponds to 3, and so on. Uh, we don't specify which. Uh, but uh, there should be some f uh, largest, fi uh, largest prime. So this is our assumption. Now, uh, okay, let's call it largest prime. Now, let's define this number m by p1 times p2 times up to pn plus 1. So by assumption, this cannot be a prime, because this is greater than n. So uh, this cannot be prime, but uh, so this uh, m should be composite. So this means uh, there is some prime uh, such that pi divides m. But that is possi impossible because if you divide by any of the primes, any of the finitely many primes, there will be uh, 1 as a remainder. So, but this is not possible. impossible. Therefore this is a contradiction and so there are infinitely many primes. There are a few variations of this theorem uh, but before noting that let us uh, note that uh, all odd numbers can be expressed as either 4n plus 1 or 4n plus 3. Okay, all odd numbers. Okay, then uh, note that uh, if uh, the product of odd numbers of this form, 4n plus 1, is all again of this form. For example, uh, to see this, for n1 plus 1 times for n2 plus 1, uh, we have for n and for n2 and for n1, for n2 plus 1. So factorizing by 4, we have
So again, this is 4 times something plus 1. And some primes are of this form. Okay. Primes are odd, odd numbers except for 2. So some of them have uh, this form and some of them have this form. For example, we have 3. Actually, this is uh, 4 times 0 plus 3 or 7, that is 4 times 1 plus 3, or 11, that is 4 times 2 plus 3, and so on. In fact, uh, here's the uh, theorem. Uh, there are infinitely many Uh, primes of the form 4n plus 3. Now let's prove this theorem. And we prove in a similar manner as the previous one. So suppose we prove by contradiction. So suppose there are finitely many primes of this form. Many primes of the form 4n plus 3. So we can enumerate all of them, like p1, p2, and so on, up to pn. And by the way, p1 is 3, p2 is 7, and so on. And pn is the largest prime of this form. Okay, now we define m as 4, p2, p3, up to pn. Note, we do not include p1 here. We start from p2, and plus 3. Now. This number uh, cannot be divided by any of these primes, right? So pi does not divide m for i starting from 2, 3, and so on, up to m. And also, 3 does not uh, divide m because uh, this one can be divide, uh, divided by 3, but uh, this one is not divisible by 3, right? So in any case, about 3 is actually p1. So for any of uh, primes of this form, 4n plus 3, m cannot be divided. So uh, therefore, m is a product uh, is a product of primes of uh, this form 4n plus 1. Uh, by the way, this m is not even number, so uh, this does not include uh, 2 as a factor. So if m is a composite, then it should be of this form. However, uh, the product of uh, num odd numbers of this form is again of this form. So it cannot be uh, like for some four times some integer plus three, which is a contradiction. So this is a contradiction. And therefore, there are infinitely many uh, primes of 4n plus 3. And we are done. Next, we just uh, list a few uh, interesting facts or conjectures regarding prime numbers. Uh, first of all, uh, it's uh, conjectured by Bertrand and proved by Chebyshev. Uh, he, uh, that is prime number uh, n, uh, n plus 1th 
prime number is less than two times the, the previous pr prime number for all uh, n natural numbers. Okay, so for example, uh, three is a prime number, and the previous prime number is two. So this is okay, and five is a prime number, and the previous prime number is three. So this holds, and so on. And another is this function pi of x. This is the number of number of primes less than x. Okay. For example, uh, pi. So by, by the way, this pi is not that that, that pi three point one four and so on. This is a function. And pi one is zero because there are no prime numbers less than one. And pi two is uh, wait a minute less than or equal to. So in this case, it's 1. 2 is the only prime that is less than or equal to 2. And pi 3 and pi 4, it, they are uh, equal to 2. There are two prime numbers, 2 and 3, and so on. And Gauss conjectured that this function times log of x divided by x converges to 1 as x goes to infinity. So this is a conjecture regarding the distribution of prime numbers. So this uh, what this means is that as x goes to infinity, so for large x, uh, the distribution of x is something like x over log of x. So there are this many prime numbers less than x. Okay, and another is uh, Goldbach's conjecture. That is, uh, even integer other than 2 is the sum of 2 primes. Integer other than 2 is the sum of 2 primes. This is a very simple, easy to understand statement, but uh, it hasn't been proved yet. And let's see a few examples. Uh, so other than 2, so let's consider 4. This is the sum of 2 plus 2. Both of them are, of course, primes. Uh, same prime, actually. And 6, uh, 3 plus 3, and 8. Uh, okay, so 8 is 3 plus 5, and 10, 5 plus 5, 12, uh, what is it, uh, 7 plus 5, so both are primes, and so on. This looks very simple, but uh, the as far as I know, uh, uh, this hasn't been proved yet.